We're really excited to see you uh, here in the Connect Group tonight. Glad that everybody's doing so well, uh, keeping the faith. As you remember, last week we talked about the voice we listen to in our battles, and I want to continue this series on the sovereignty of God. We must continue to keep our eyes on God no matter what. This is our focus. This is who we are. A part of being who we are is we're going to continue our food outreach this weekend. Please be here Friday and Saturday. Um, we're following all the recommendations that the CDC is giving down to our country. We're going to do our best to keep everybody safe. But in the midst of it, in taking all of our precautions, we're making sure that our faith stays strong, that our attention is always on the things of God, the purpose of God, and obviously God's plan in our life. I want to talk to you today about something very important to all of us. It's the way that we live daily, the way that we should be living daily. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says this, For I know the plans I have for you, declare the Lord, plans for your good welfare, not for your evil, to give you a future and a hope. Proverbs follows it up, certainly, and says it this way, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lay not to your own understanding, and in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make every path straight before you. 1 Peter 5, 7 says this, casting all your cares upon him because he cares for you. And then Romans says it like this throughout the Bible. You find scriptures over and over demonstrating the same thing. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. In one of the most recognizable stories in the Bible, we find Moses, a guy that no one but God would have chosen to lead. He had so many things going against him, but God looked at him and saw his heart. He saw a man that would allow God to lead. He saw a man that would allow God to be in charge. You see, Moses had the faith, he had the assurance, he had the confidence that allowed him to give God control. He let God lead. I want to talk to you today about letting God lead, certainly during this season, but in every moment of your life. In Exodus 5.22, we see this story of Moses play out because in the midst of tragedy, so, times, so many times it's hard to see the hand of God. But let me tell you this, God is enough. He showed himself mighty and strong to the Israelites as they were facing all the things they faced in Egypt. Let God lead. The best thing you can do in your life is let God lead. Don't try to do this on your own. Don't try to figure things out on your own. Just let God lead. It's exactly what Moses had to do. And as God began to lead... Is Moses allowed God to lead? All of a sudden, God says, let my people go. Let my people be free. I wonder if in 2020, the Lord isn't saying, let my people be people of faith. Let my people stand strong in the midst of this pandemic. Let my people be the church. Let my people rise up and know that I'm with them. I'm going to guide them. I'm going to oversee all of their things. Today in this connect group you're setting in, this time together, you're here to encourage one another, to build one another up. We're here demonstrating to our communities, to our families, we love them. We're demonstrating to one another, we are absolutely determined to grow together. And we are going to find ways in the midst of everything that is happening to serve with diligence, serve with purpose, and serve with excellence. God has called us to do this. He calls to Moses to tell the Israelites it's time to move on to a better thing. What if right now God is doing the same thing to us? If his voice is thundering and saying, I'm leading you in a more perfect way. I'm leading you to become my people full of faith and full of purpose. So God does it. He does it for Moses. He sends the plague of blood, the plague of frogs, the plague of gnats, flies, all the livestock of the Egyptians died, the plague of boils, the plague of hail. Listen, I don't want anything else to come. We've been through enough. But what I do want to see happen is I want to see the church rise up in faith and confidence and let God lead. Listen, we can say this. The Israelites went from not enough to just enough to having more than enough. What I would love to see the church do today is say it's time to step into a new arena a new realm of spirituality from barely enough to not sure we have enough to saying that we have more than enough. That's exactly what God did for them. And I believe that's exactly what God's wanting to do for us. The Israelites went from being slaves who had nothing to being incredibly rich in the next moment. We're not talking about money. We're just talking about being the people of God. They went from struggling to abundance. They went from just trying to make it to walking in this incredible realm of spiritual, powerful things where supernatural things happened every day around them. They had been in bondage to Egypt for 430 years. 
And then God delivered them. Think about that. Get this. When they arrived, arrived in Egypt 430 years earlier, it was during a time of famine. When they came, they came starving. They barely had enough. They literally fell under bondage because they were barely making it. But when the Egyptians opened up the grain storage bins, then they had barely enough. But they became slaves. They lost their position and went back to not enough. Think about that. They didn't have enough standing. They didn't have enough resources. But when God stepped in to help them, they had more than enough. Let God lead. That's what we're doing. That's what we're believing. And that's what we're spending every day focused on is letting God lead us and letting God be God. You see, here's what happens. When God stepped in to redeem them, they had more than enough. So in 2020, during a season of pandemic crossing our world, we're going to believe that God is leading us. And we're absolutely going to see that we're going to have more than enough. We're going to see soul saved. We're going to see people helped. We're going to learn how to love more. We're going to learn how to grow under great pressure. We're going to learn how to serve in more creative, beautiful ways. And we're going to do this all under God's spirit of purpose and his desire of excellence upon his church. This is the season we're in. It's a season of God leading us, God purposing us, and God guiding us through everything that we're in. You see, God is constantly putting us in places that we can be reminded of his glory and his power. God took the Israelites out of Egypt in one day, but it took him over 40 years to get Egypt out of the Israelites. Instead of doubting God in this season, we need to look to the opportunities that God is providing. We need to work together so that God can bless us how he wants to bless us. You see, the devil thinks so often in life he has us backed into a corner. Don't whine. Just stand firm. Remember the message last week? What is the voice you're listening to in the middle of the battle? You see, God is so amazing. God is so powerful. When you have faith and you trust in God, you know he's going to work things out. There's an elderly minister I remember listening to as a young boy, and I've grown up listening to this. It's something you can find on YouTube. Uh, you can find him uh, giving this uh, speech, I believe this anointed words. Let me share them with you today. S.M. Lockridge said this. He got up before a conference, this convention of ministers, and he said, my king is the king of righteousness. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings, and he is the Lord of lords. That's my king. He went on to say, my king is enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. And he is impartially merciful. That's my king. He is enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. And he's impartially merciful. That's my king. This elderly minister went on to describe a God that he was allowing to lead him. I would encourage you today to maybe look at one another and maybe remind one another, we're going to let God lead. We're going to let God be God because he's the king that reigns over the universe. He's the king that reigns in our hearts. He is the everything, the all in all, the first, the last, the beginning and the end. S.M. Lockridge goes on to say this. He says, my king, he's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's the center savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He stands in the solitude of himself. He is unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He's the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the supreme problem in higher criticism. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He is the core and the necessity of spiritual religion. He's the miracle of the age. You kind of get the picture. God is everything to everybody, folks. S.M. Lockard said it so well. That's why I wanted you to hear his words. He said he's the miracle of the age. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens. He guards. He guides. He heals the sick. He cleanses the lepers. He forgives sinners, he discharges debtors, he delivers the captive, he defends the feeble, he blesses the young, he serves the unfortunate, he regards the aged, he rewards them, he serves them, he beautifies the meek. I love what he says next. Because he said to a conference, and I believe if I remember correctly, they erupted in praise as, he heard, as they heard these words said. He said, I wonder, do you know him? That's my king. He's, he is the key. 
He's the key to knowledge. He's the wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. And he's the gateway of glory. That's my key. Do you know him? Because my friend, if you knew him, you'd let him lead. You'd realize that his leadership is the best thing you and I will ever experience. Why? Because his office is manifold. His promise is sure. His life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love, it never changes. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. I wish I could describe him to you. But S.M. Lockridge went on to say, he's indescribable. Oh, yes, he is. He is indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. He said, you can't get him out of your mind. You can't get him off of your hand. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. The Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find fault in him. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him. The grave couldn't hold him. That's our king. That's my king. And then he went on to say, just like the scripture does, and thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever. How long is that? Ever and ever? When you get to forever, add some more forevers, and amen. It just keeps going on. What he knew and what he experienced was that God is in charge. Let God lead. Let God lead you. Let God give you confidence. Let God give you assurance. God's got this. God's got this. All we need to do is continue to follow him. I love you. God bless you. God is going to lead us into great things. Let's make sure we let him lead. Faith, not fear. Purpose, passion, all centered around the things of God. And this is us, the church, his body, letting him lead. God bless you in Jesus' name.